Hello, my name is Malcolm Richardson. I'm the director of the UK's National Health Service Mycology Reference Centre and I'm going to talk a little bit about the epidemiology of cryptococcal disease, disease caused by the yeast cryptococcus. So what I hope you'll get out of this short presentation are these following learning outcomes. I'd like you to be aware of the epidemiology of, this, of uh, cryptococcal antigenemia and meningitis. And secondly, to be aware of the risk factors for acquiring cryptococcal disease, what patients acquire this disease and why. Okay, to summarize what we know about cryptococcus and the disease cryptococcosis. So the term cryptococcosis, this refers to infections caused by any species of the genus cryptococcus. So this yeast is capable of causing disease in both immunocompetent and immunocompromised patients. Cryptococcal meningitis is the most common clinical manifestation of cryptococcosis. And finally, disseminated disease caused by cryptococcus is largely associated with HIV AIDS patients. So first of all then, cryptococcus and HIV. In certain parts of the world, in particular in sub-Saharan Africa, it's the second or the third leading opportunistic infection in patients with HIV and AIDS. And it's those patients who have a CD4 count of less than 100. These are the patients who are most at risk. And this is a nasty infection. It's responsible for up to 15%. And there is a range here depending on what studies you look at and what parts of the, of the world, 13 to 44% of deaths caused by this organism in HIV patients. And finally, 6% of the global HIV population who have a CD4 count of under 100, these patients are usually positive for the cryptococcal antigen, which we will talk about in another lecture in terms of diagnosis. And there is a substantial geographical variability. So we can look at the prevalence of this antigen. So the antigen is released from the polysy polysaccharide capsule that surrounds the yeast and has over many, many years, 50 or 60 years, been recognised as the diagnostic test for this disease. And we can see here from a variety of studies, we can see the prevalence of the um, antigen positivity in different parts of the, of the world, primarily in, in Africa, ranging from 4% up to 13% uh, in, in Nigeria, and in relation to the, the CD4 uh, T cell count. So patients with a low number of, of CD4 cells, as I've said, below 100, we can, we can see the, the variation in the prevalence of this antigen in patients. So which patients are at risk? First of all, um, it's primarily HIV positive patients here, so we have 80 to 90 percent of these patients, they can be at risk of this particular organism. And also patients with um, idiopathic CD4 lympho lymphopenia and patients with uh, lymphoproliferative malignancies and disorders, patients who are on long-term steroids and or immunosuppressive therapy of various types, patients who've had a solid organ transplant or those who've undergone a bone marrow transplant. These recipients are susceptible to this disease, and patients with sarcoidosis. Um, patients who have been treated with monoclonal antibodies, patients with a variety of rheumatological diseases, patients with various um, antibody, uh, hyper-antibody syndromes like hyper-IgM and hyper-IgE syndromes, patients with decompensated chronic liver disease, those who've had undergo, who have had uh, renal failure, or they're on peritoneal dialysis, and uh, also adult onset immunodeficiency. Turning now to the, the second um, major species of Cryptococcus, Cryptococcus gattii, this we see predominantly in immunocompetent individuals, but there are other risk factors as well which have been described as shown in this particular reference, which has been cited here. HIV patients, patients who are smokers, Age, there seems to be a relationship between um, <clears throat> uh, sort of more, more older people and also a history of invasive cancers. 
So we can look at a couple of studies here, one uh, published by Parks in 2009 in the journal AIDS, looking at the global burden of disease, cryptococcal disease. Um, at that time, there were few provider-based cohort studies, and the um, estimates in this particular analysis and survey probably overestimated the actual burden of disease. But we can see here in the top right-hand uh, panel of this, uh, of this slide that it's patients in sub-Saharan Africa where we see um, most, most cases with much, much lower numbers in other parts of, of um, the, the world, the um, Americas, uh, North Africa, Europe, and also in Asia. A much more recent study that was published um, this year in Lancet Infectious Diseases um, seems to indicate that there was a decreased global burden, but the mortality remains unchanged even though we do have effective drugs. Um, in 2009, the mortality appeared to be uh, 65%. In 2017, it seems to have increased up to 80%. And it's sub-Saharan Africa, which still has reports the majority of cases and deaths. And we can look also ac across, the, um, across the globe, not just focusing on, on Africa. And uh, the summary from these types of studies on surveys and analyses is that uh, cryptococcosis it is responsible for 15% of AIDS-related mortality globally. And the key thing is here that the prevalence of antigenemia in the, it seems to be about 6% among, amongst HIV uh, patients, so that reflects exposure, of course, and, and degree uh, disease progression in patients particularly who have a low CD4 count. So in summary then, um, it's HIV, it's AIDS, that appears to be the most common risk factor for acquiring this disease. And I think that's just a reflection of very poor, low host immunity. It accounts for approximately 15% of AIDS-related deaths, and the global prevalence of antigenemia cryptococcal antigen, it appears to be up to 6%. Thank you very much. <clears throat>